Hey everybody, it's John with Upstate Brush Control out here at the shop. Gonna do a little uh, sharpen on the new Shirex. So this uh, cutter head that we have here, this is a new cutter head for us. Um, this is actually just a demo still at this point. Not 100% sure uh, where it's going or, <laughs> I do like the cutter head. Um, but as far as either a sponsorship or something like that, we're, we're still in the middle of that probably by the time this video comes out we will have that resolved but anyways um, I probably put somewhere around eight eight to ten hours on it uh, mulching up that job where we tore down the house and I got that huge rod uh, bolt stuck in there I was shocked that I didn't crack a tooth or tear the line or anything and that was a big heavy-duty bolt for sure but um so, honestly, I have not sharpened uh, this since I've owned it, or owned it, since we've had it. So, um, yeah, just a couple things, just kind of go over here with, with it. Uh. Alright, so I just ran up to the shop over there and grabbed this little pamphlet here tells all the specs and everything but um so <laughs> i was gonna start rattling off stuff about it and i was like well is, am i 100 percent sure about that so looks like we got a um one of the things let's do this a um, couple things that it does and does not uh so a couple things it does have is, um, let's talk about teeth real quick. The amount of blades. So it has 27 cutters on it. Uh, removable tooth, it is a one-sided tooth. This is, by the way, the 70, yeah, the HM70DR. Um, I think that's door, so. This right here is to try to kind of protect the the hoses so they kind of loop this way and go back over to hook into the machine. It's just to help um, so they don't fall down and get wrapped up in the drum because I've done that before. Not in this one, but a different machine. But um, so we got 27 blades. Um, let's go with the rotor diameter. So it is about 18 inches overall. Uh, 17, 17 and a half, 17.6. Um, so it's significantly smaller in diameter this way uh, as a whole. I believe it's that's with the ring and then the actual center of it. I think that's around eight inches, I believe. Um, I saw it here. Yeah, eight inches. So uh, about 17 inches. If I remember right, my Beacon shoot it's uh 26 28 something like that it's significantly bigger but um one thing that i like about a smaller drum uh there's pros and cons to both so a smaller smaller drum like this um it has a faster recovery because it's not as heavy to be able to spool up as fast the bigger drum when you're in uh, bigger wood, it keeps the inertia up. It has that momentum of that big drum spinning around and it's gonna keep it going. Um, a bigger horsepower machine uh, will do better with a bigger drum. A lower horsepower machine will do a lot better with a smaller drum because you're not starving that machine of, of all of its power to keep that thing up and going. This has a very, very fast recovery very quick recovery um, I wouldn't say it's a super lightweight drum but it is uh, um, to me it doesn't take much at all just for me to kick it over like that but uh, yeah it's got the trap door this one does have electric um, connection on it uh, it does not have hydraulic you can get hydraulic for these uh, this one they said it wouldn't take much it's just how it got ordered it was a little mix-up but it's no big deal um they said they'd send me the kit if i wanted it but the electric is fine the only thing i don't like about the electric is you have to have the cutter head engaged to be able to move the door so if i wanted to just flip the door up or down after the cutter head is off you can't do that yet cutter head has to be spinning to engage 
but that's just I think it's some kind of safety thing um but yeah uh, the overall width <clears throat> it's right about overall width is 88 inches um, this is definitely a wider head uh, a lot of guys in the right away industry um, stuff like that they they like the wide heads because one pass type thing on a lot of material um, I personally like a lot narrower head the narrower the better easier on your machine it's uh, easier to get in tight areas um, not saying this is horrible but if you got uneven ground trying to work a ditch or something like that, you're kind of crossing a ditch, a smaller head will fit in those little areas a lot better. Um, for, for what I do, uh, I, they have a smaller head, but it's a standard flow from my understanding, and I don't know if they can get a um, this same pump in the, the narrow one. I, I think they're working on it. Don't, don't, uh, don't take that to the bank. but. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. Well, let's look on the paper here real quick. I don't know. I can't figure it out. But whatever. So that's uh, kind of the rundown on it. A couple really cool features that I do like about this cutter head. Oh my goodness. So um, I thought this was pretty interesting. So it's got when you grease when you grease your cutter head here, um, it has a like in your other whatever if you're greasing any kind of bearings you could over grease and blow out the seals in it this has like an air vent basically whenever it's full it'll start coming out i believe it's this one or this one i can't remember one of these two holes down here it will uh so you know for sure that you got enough grease because you've got to grease these bearings you got to stay on top of that see there's another one right here this is for the bearing on this side so that's where the blowout hole is or air vent whatever you want to call it but yeah it's a pretty neat feature um you can get them with a hydraulic push bar right here so this can go to the ground and you can rake stuff back uh all kinds of features with them um you can get them with and without a trap door everybody knows but i do love the trap door um huge fan of trap doors uh i've been told that if you know how to run a cutter head you don't need a trap door but uh <laughs> i don't know it's, it's just a personal preference anything to make this safer it's all about safety you know anything to keep that one chip that flies out in traffic and hits that one car or goes through that one window of the person's house or truck window whatever it is because if it flies it's going to hit a window probably 90 percent of the time you know for some dumb reason but um yeah, she's held up really well. I have not actually sharpened. I don't remember if I said that or not. I have not sharpened this thing out yet. So that's kind of why I set it up over here. I just washed it. It was all nasty and stuff. So um, it comes with this grinder. They send this with it. And everybody knows, I say everybody, a lot of people know that I like using like a floppy disk. But I've never actually run one of these. So um, we'll see how it does. And uh, so it comes with a battery. Um, so yeah, so, uh, we do have a gauge over here, um, I've never really peek on and everybody else, they all got gauges, but never really got into using the gauges, honestly, but, uh, looks like that's for the point, possibly, this, I'm assuming... You hold that on the back, vice versa. Probably this way. Should probably figure that out, huh? <laughs> oh man, but I know uh, it's not that hard to sharpen. Just get them sharp. You don't want them. You don't want to take too much material off the front, and then you get a dive nose. But you want to take it evenly all the way back. It is basically the gist of it. Um, I mean, these were still cutting good, but they're not razor, razor sharp. I mean, I, depending on what I'm cutting, I would probably keep running these. But uh, I'm going to touch it up. Everybody has their way of sharpening. How much do you sharpen? How often do you sharpen? So, my theory is, a lot of this is just my opinion. 
I've been cutting brush. I uh, run these mulchers for coming up on 10 years now. So I feel like I have a good bit of experience running these things and um, a lot of sharpening and a lot of my guy, guys that previously worked for me, a lot of a lot of hours. Um, we've seen how they wear, how they don't wear, stuff like that. But um, a lot has to do with the material you are in. If you are in soft wood, uh, poplar, uh, soft pine, stuff like that, you can run semi semi dull knives i mean it don't it does not have to be razor razor sharp if you're sharpening two three times a day and ramble and soft material you are actually just taking that tooth away there's there's really no point um if you're in hickory red oak white oak you know a lot of stuff that we have here um here in the carolinas some of that harder wood yes i'm going to keep it sharp i'll probably sharpen once a day very very rarely have i sharpened twice a day um but majority of the time it's just once a day touch them up um get a good uh an edge evenly back this way i tend to take more material off the back than a lot of people a lot of people like to go straight down i'll take more off the back because what happens is, as this tooth gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it will start to curl, curl down this way. You'll lose this front edge. So, um, by taking some of that back, uh, that's just what we have found. Um, this one might be a little bit different than Fecons, but they all spin the same direction, cut most of the same material. So, um, we're going to sharpen her up here real quick, get her touched up, see how it looks. Well, they say, uh, like, oh, you know, you waste too much time. It only takes five, 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, but 10 or 10, 15 minutes to sharpen. But, but realistically, I mean, this should only take me 20, maybe 20 minutes at the end of the day. And, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So let's, uh, let's get to sharpen here. Well, that little uh, that little dude works pretty good. I like it. We'll uh, we'll see how it holds up. But um, so kind of see the that one's hard to do because this is in the way. But I mean, that's really what we're going for. Just get that pretty sharp right there. You can see how this one right here, the point of it is thicker. You know, that's the cutting edge right there. And let's look at this one here. That's uh, a lot narrower. I could have got a little bit more right there, but that's pretty close. Pretty close. All right. sharp.
So that only took a minute, and uh, yeah, the disc, I hit that side over there, and you guys can see that, but it kind of busted it out, but yeah, it only took a few minutes to do that one side. That sharpener, uh, that wheel works really good. I like it. need to get him that sharp.
all right guys so battery died um yeah that only took a couple minutes went really well tell you what i like that little sanding disc though that is pretty cool held up well and then you know they i guess it's not a sanding it's like an abrasive but um it doesn't flex it's got this piece on the back here so it doesn't flex that way you can get a nice flat surface on the tooth but yeah man that only took me what 10 minutes not even that to uh sharpen it up gonna throw some grease in it and uh she will be ready to get back to mulching so now i just gotta get my skid steer fixed so had uh some issues with it but stay tuned to the channel guys i hope you guys appreciate this little video on shirex and thank you shirex for the demo i really have enjoyed the cutter head and i uh, hope to keep using it i hope to keep working with you guys so hopefully uh you guys have seen a lot more of shirex products um they they have a whole line of um excavator heads to uh, you know big dedicated uh you can put on a couple hundred horsepower machine um great product uh i know people are going to say this in the comments but yes this is very much like a dennis seamoff um from my understanding i'm probably have this wrong but guys that used to work at dennis seamoff when it got bought out they went out and started their own company called Shearex, and that's how Shearex began. A lot of same designs, a lot of people who used to build the Dennis Seamoffs, from my understanding. I could be wrong on this, but that's kind of what I've gathered. Um, as everybody knows in the mulching world, Dennis Seamoff, uh, top of the line. You know, Dennis Seamoff, Fecon, FAE, you know, I think are the sheer x you know top four there but uh <laughs> you know it's definitely the the top of the food chain uh dennis seamoff i believe my understanding was they're the ones that came out with the ringed design as well the dcr depth controlled ring and everybody else has been copying them since so hope you guys appreciate this video hope you guys like it give me a thumbs up throw some comments below Helps out the channel a lot, and uh, hopefully we'll keep going on some videos with this, and uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, y'all.